Please notice you're talking about managing your personal money, your family money. This time, it's not about business money. It is about personal financial decision. Why is this important? Because experience and research have shown us that many of us do fail in our business, not because the business failed, because we failed to plan our finances at home. So we kind of bring the problems of the family financial management, the failures at home, the failures in the family, get into the business. Sometimes you may find the business failing. And if you look at the root cause, the business didn't fail. We failed the business, ladies and gentlemen. Let us look at how to do personal financial decisions so that we don't fail our business. And especially in a crisis like this. There are two reasons why you most likely don't know where your money went to. And sometimes I like sharing that with, you know, some kind of simple example. Have you ever experienced something like this? You put some money maybe in your wallet, your pocket, let's say a thousand shillings. You spend it throughout the day and come evening, you look at a change and you have a shock. It's only 50 ball. What happened to the rest of the money? You try to trace what you bought. Some of the major transaction flows you can remember. Put everything together, maybe you can remember 700. Change. You add the 50 change, you have 750. And the next question, what happened to my 250? You can recall, you can tell. Could it be a loss somewhere? Does my wallet have some holes or my pockets have some holes somewhere? Sometimes you're tempted to call people and ask them whether they gave you change. Why did this happen, my good friends? Two reasons. One, you didn't budget for the money. Just put it in the pocket. So it can go anywhere. And two, you didn't record your transactions. You got a receipt anywhere, you fold it, you fold it, throw it away. If you didn't record it, you hadn't planned how to spend it, it's unlikely. Don't push your mind to your brain much. It's unlikely you remember. Now that is just about a thousand shillings for just about hours in a day. What about the many thousands, millions of those in business? Okay, and the number of days, months, months, years. Number two things, budget for it, record the transaction. The number one measure of your creditworthiness was your collateral. That is not in The number one measure of your creditworthiness today is your credit. Have the discipline. Do not wait for things to, to tell you of the discipline. Because the way you have did in the past will naturally influence the score you will get in future. Implement your financial plan, okay? Right? There are very many beautiful plans out there. They are still in the head of their owners. The number one is jump. Jump, go and read. Okay? Now, of course, you've got to revise, review. What did I plan to do? What did I do? What did I plan to achieve? What did I achieve? Where did I fail? Why did I fail? What can I do to improve in the next cycle? Because this planning, as you see, is cyclical. It is not just for one month, one week, one year. No, it's continuous. By the way, many times I suggest to people, because we are very busy and there are many things that cause from our attention, a lot more than critical things like financial planning. Sometimes, you know, challenges in the business, sometimes challenges in the family. I, I say plan for the time as well. How about you set aside a day in the month? It could even be half a day. The last Friday of the month, what you're going to do is to review and revise your financial plan. Ask what worked, what didn't work, what did I plan to do, why did it fail, what is it I didn't see, how can I improve going forward? That will help you to repeat the process again to determine your current financial position, okay? develop new goals and the process This is what I've been saying. Okay, step one, what's your current financial situation? Prepare your list of assets, debts, okay? And be as candid as you can. This is reality check. What are my assets? What are my two assets? But what are my true liabilities? Why do I say that? There's some that are obvious. I have a title. Okay, I know the value. Okay, I have this debt. I know I have the balance. That's okay. But hey, but I go a little deeper, right? Go a little deeper. Is the asset really an asset? Or is it bringing in some liabilities? Make sure you look at all of them. Credit card, car loan, SACO, home loan, okay? These are personal loans. Personal loan. 
personal assets. What is the net worth? Is it positive or negative? If it is negative, then you know what it means. You are borrowing from your children. That is what a negative balance sheet means. If it is positive, you are lending to your children. You're taking it to the future. We call it in a generation transfer of funds. To so ask yourself, are you borrowing from your children and grandchildren? Or are you lending to your children and grandchildren? And creating in them a culture that if you give them resources, then you expect that they will also be with their, 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 their children and grandchildren the same if not. What do you want to see here? You want to see the net worth growing annually. Okay? Make sure you check it every year. By the way, expenses is one of the areas we have the habit of ignoring, or we have the habit of overlooking. And be as exhaustive as possible. It's also good to make sure there is a rat eye, the second person to review what is it you have come up with, either within the family or a mentor, as we talk about later. Okay? So you look at all these. Is your income statement leading to a positive? That's a surplus. Or is it a deficit? That's a loss. And again, if it's a loss, bring from future generation. If it's a positive, good. You are now lending to future. And when you look at this, my good friends, this is where you review with, you know, uh, a clear, carded approach. What is it I might mean about this? Must I pay this? Can I survive without it? And don't forget this. There are very many money wasters around us. Money wasters. These are things that we spread for that we didn't need. Having known where you are, set your goals. What is your horizon? What do you want to achieve the next one year, the next three years, five years and above? Okay? I want to be comfortable about medical expenses of the family. I want to make sure we have a home for my family. I want to make sure there is financial stability and sustainability of my family as you go. So what are the causes of action? As I said earlier, how can you achieve this now? So there are many different ways of buying the house. Should I construct one? Okay. Should I buy one outright? Okay. Now you've got to assess all these things, the value, the security, the future, right? And what return you're going to get out of it. Okay. And then how do I finance it, for example? Hmm. Do I take a loan? And as I say, mortgage. By the way, did you know that there are mortgage benefits? Um that reduces your tax exposure. Hmm. You want to learn more about that again? Come on, July 16th. We'll be looking about taxation, some of the benefits you're getting. So, should I continue the same course of action? Remember, you cannot do the same thing the same way and expect different results. How about putting discipline in our members of the family? Okay? And especially training our young ones to start the art, to start uh, dealing with um, managing finances early enough. Okay. Some of us did not grow in an environment where saving, spending was our decision. Let's change that with the one we are bringing up. We need to show people, especially those dependent on us, money is not manna that drops from heaven. You sweat for it. And there will be a limit of how long you sweat for them. Of course, what I have brought through is you evaluate your authorities. What are they? So how are you going to make a choice? Okay. So what are you losing by the decision you make? Okay. If you buy a house, you may reduce money available for holidays. Perhaps you go for holiday, it may be difficult for you to construct. That's the kind of thing you're looking at. Okay. And you also think about the value of money over time. Create and implement your financial plan. This is where you say, act, do it. You decided to do it, do it. Then review is action and advice. Are things going the way you want it or not? Is it because of what you did or what you did? Is it because of the environment you are in that you had not foreseen? Like now COVID came, we had not foreseen it. Is it that you did not adjust that COVID fast enough? Okay. Or you didn't adjust it in the right way? You assume this business as you should. Is it a culture you have developed over time that you spared without planning and it has caught up with you at this point? Okay? That the plan and the execution are two different. The B, these are the things. 
but a bit that you are not sharing your plan with the most important people in the family so that they can walk with you the journey because it is not one person journey if you're the only one making money you're the only one planning and the others are just there waiting for things to happen don't be surprised if they cannot make decisions because we never got involved in sometimes one of the subject i like uh, sharing a lot about is on family business management okay and i know soon moses is going to give us an opportunity to do that and we can you know flash a little bit some of these mistakes that we make how we are involving the family in the financial how we are sharing the responsibility and how we are reviewing in a very open much manner to see okay things that are the way they have